Today in All Sports Central, we're going to be going over our top 10 most surprising teams of the 2019-2020 college football season. Now let me tell you right off the bat, there are may, way more than 10. These are just the top 10 uh, that were the most surprising of the season. And of course, I mean, once again, there were many, many more than 10. Uh, but these are just 10 that I thought were the most surprising. Starting at number 10, we got Utah. And their 2019 record was 11-3. So, I mean, no, overall, I mean, I thought they were going to have a pretty good year. I was giving them a 9-3 and three projection before the season even started. Uh, but for them to get to 11 wins, I mean, this team legitimately had a shot at the cultural playoff. I mean, they finished first in the Pac-12 South. They went on to the Pac-12 Championship, which they lost to Oregon 15-37. to So, uh, it was a pretty big no-show for this Utah team in the Pac-12 Championship. But overall, I mean, if they could have beaten Oregon, and if they could have beat, like, went undefeated in the regular season, I, I have no doubt that this Utah team could have made the college World playoff. Uh, but towards the end of the season, they kind of just fell apart. They lost to Texas 10-38 to in the Alamo Bowl. So they kind of didn't even show up for the postseason. But overall, uh, Utah fans and Utah is nothing to be um, upset about. This was a really good season for this team. And I expect this to continue into the future. 2018 record for this team was 9-5. and five. So overall, I mean, um, it's a slight improvement. Two more wins. So, um, yeah, overall, once again, great season for Utah. Number nine is Arizona State from the Pac-12. Their 2019 record was 8-5. and five. Overall, good season for them. 2019, or yeah, your 2019 prediction for this team was 7-5. and five. And their 2018 record was 7-6. and six. So I wasn't really expecting anything crazy compared to 2018. Uh, I thought in 2019 they'd stay more in the same position, uh, which they sort of did, but they kind of exceed my expectations in the fact that they were able to upset Oregon, and they also played very well in big situations. They finished fourth in the Pac-12 South. Uh, so overall, that's not all that great. I mean, uh, once again, the record of 8-5 is good enough. They beat Florida State 10 to, or 20 to 14 in the Sun Bowl, so that was a great way to end the season. But yeah, lots of tough losses after 2018. That's why um, I thought it was pretty doubtful that Arizona State would have all that crazy, crazy of a season. But overall, I mean, going into 2020, uh, that's up for question up again. Number eight is Wake Forest, and they were eight and five in 2019 as well. Uh, my 2019 prediction for this team was a little bit lower at six and six. I thought they'd make a bowl game. Uh, I thought that I mean I thought Wake Forest coming into the season had a ton of talent. Of course, with Newman at quarterback, I mean, he'd been playing really well, and I expected him to really show up this season, which he definitely did. Uh, but this team finished third in the ACC Atlantic, lost to Michigan State 21 to 27 in the Pinstripe Bowl, though. So uh, they weren't able to end off the season with a bowl game win, but overall, once again, still a great, great season for this team. And they were ranked for several weeks too. Let me remind you, I mean, this Wake Forest team in the middle of the season was legitimately looking like a um, a team that could cause some trouble in the ACC. Uh, but overall, I mean, yeah, once again, they were ranked for several weeks. Overall, great season for Wake Forest once again. Number seven is Indiana, and this team went 8-5 and five as well. And before the season started, I thought they'd go 6-6 six and six as well. I thought that Indiana, of course, I mean, Peyton Ramsey at quarterback. This team uh, had a ton of potential, and uh, they definitely showed it. They got eight wins, and they got some really good wins in there as well. Uh, but overall, I mean, after finishing 5-7 in 2018, I didn't really expect them to do anything crazy, um, which overall they were able to do um, a really good job, of course, getting three more wins than how they did in 2018. Uh, they did lose to Tennessee 22-23 in the Gator Bowl. Uh, but once again, it was just a great season for this team. They finished fourth in the Big Ten East. And looking toward 2020, I mean, they are losing a ton of talent going into next year. That kind of concerns me a little bit from this team. Uh, but once again, the potential is still there for Indiana to go on to have another good bowl season. Speaking of Tennessee, they are our number six. They were 8-5 as well this season. They, or My prediction for this team was 6-6. Six six. Of course, Jeremy Pruitt. Um, trying to turn this team back around, and he's doing a pretty good job, apparently. I mean, man, from them to go to five and seven to eight and five within a year, uh, he's doing a great job. And certainly, I mean, if, if you look at Tennessee's schedule, I mean, man, uh, they've really improved over the season. Uh, they started off pretty bumpy, uh, but they ended really well. They ended up finishing third in the SEC East between or behind two really good teams. And they beat Indiana 23-22 in the Gator Bowl. So they were able to finish off with a great bowl win as well. Uh, but the thing is, though, about this team, kind of just looking um, at a first preview on this team, they could easily be a dark horse in the SEC for 2020. Uh, I'm sure many people will be talking about them. Uh, but watch out for Tennessee next year. This is a team that could cause some trouble in the SEC. And they could pull off some pretty big upsets. I think this team could get to nine wins, possibly even 10 plus next season. Watch out. Number five is North Carolina. And they went 7-6 and six this season, which is absolutely incredible can, er, based off of how they've done the last couple of seasons. My 2019 prediction for this team was actually pretty low, 5-7. and seven. Uh, So I, I predicted two less wins than they got 
actually this year. And their 2018 record was 2-9. and nine. So I thought with Mac Brown uh, coming as a coach for this team, I thought that they would get an additional three wins this year. Uh, but man, yeah, they, they went way over that. They ended up getting five more wins than they did last year. That's very impressive. Uh, they finished fifth in the ACC Coastal, so that's not very impressive. Uh, but overall, I mean, beating Temple 55-13 to in the Military Bowl is something that is impressive. Uh, yeah, so Mac Brown has already helped. It is up for question how long Mac Brown's going to be there, though. I mean, once again, he is getting a little bit older, and he's already retired once uh, from Texas, if you remember that. Um, and so it's up for question how long he'll be there, but apparently he's doing a really good job as coach. And this North Carolina team could be um, some trouble in the ACC as well next season. Watch out for them. Number four is Louisville, and this team really surprised me as well. They were 8-5 and five this season, which is absolutely stunning compared to how they performed last season at 2-10. and 10. Uh, My 2019 prediction for this team was actually four wins lower than they actually got, 4-8. and eight. I think this was my most botched um, my most botched prediction last season, a uh, four-win deficit. That's pretty bad. Uh, but they finished second in the ACC Atlantic. Let that soak in a little bit. This team almost made it to the ACC Championship. They finished second. Uh, so they only had one team to beat. Uh, but they beat Mississippi State 38-28 to in the Music City Bowl. And honestly, after 2018 went for this season, um, I really wasn't expecting a whole lot. I mean, once again, I predicted a 4-8 and eight for this team. I didn't think that they were really going to be able to do anything at all. Uh, but overall, I mean, yeah, once again, it was a great season for this team. And honestly, the only team that was in their way was Clemson. So, And honestly, they had no chance of beating Clemson. Now, if they were in the ACC Coastal, they would have only had Virginia in their way, and they wouldn't have beaten Virginia, I don't think, for um, to get to the ACC Championship game, but they would have been certainly close. I think they would have finished second in the ACC Coastal. So yeah, overall, once again, it was a really good season for Louisville, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do in 2020. Number three is Minnesota, and this team finished off 11-2 last season, and that is absolutely incredible. I thought they were going to finish 8-4. and four. Um, I was expecting a good season for Minnesota coming in uh, with Tanner Morgan and, of course, P.J. Fleck. Uh, being their head coach. I really believe in him. I think he's a great dude. Uh, he's doing a great job coaching. And we saw that Western Michigan too, how much he motivated his players. Uh, but they finished second in the Big Ten West. So they were really close making it to the Big Ten Championship. And that certainly was up for question. I mean, uh, that game against Wisconsin at the end of the season, their final game of the regular season, would have decided whether they could have gone to the Big Ten Championship or not. And man, if they could have won that, that would have been insane uh, to see them in the Big Ten Championship, which it didn't happen. Uh, but overall, they finished off the season great. I mean, they beat Auburn 31-24 to in the Outback Bowl, so uh, nothing to be upset about for Minnesota. P.J. Fleck is doing big things in Minnesota, certainly. I'm, I think the future for Minnesota is looking pretty bright. Number two is Baylor. They finished off 11-3 as well this season. And I'd say Baylor and Minnesota were your two uh, main surprise teams that came out of nowhere. Uh, and we'll talk more about number one in a sec. Uh, but your, your, your 2019 prediction for this team was 8-4. I expected more of the same from Baylor. I thought they'd have a pretty good season, possibly uh, contend maybe third or fourth in the Big 12. Uh, but I didn't expect them to finish second. That was a little bit surprising to me. I mean, after they finished since 2018, they got 7-6. and six. And so, yeah, I mean, with Charlie Brewer at quarterback, I really believed in him as well. And they ended up having a really good season, finishing second in the Big 12 once again. Uh, they lost to Georgia 14-26 to in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, Georgia kind of dominated them in the, in the Sugar Bowl. I mean, uh, they led for the majority of the game, and Baylor tried to make a little bit of a comeback towards the end of the game, which it really didn't work. But um, in the end, once again, nothing for Baylor to be sad about. They had a really good season, no doubt. I mean, 11-3, and three, that is incredible uh, compared to 2018 and how they've been over the last few years. They did. Also, if you think about it, this team had a legit chance to make the college football playoff. I mean, this team had all the keys to do it. If they could have just stayed undefeated, I mean, Oklahoma was the only team uh, that was in their way this season. If if Oklahoma wasn't in the way, this team could have easily done it. I mean, uh, they faced them twice and they lost to them twice, and that was the main problem for them. Uh, but overall, I mean, once again, it was a really good season for Baylor. Really looking forward to seeing how they do um, in 2020. I mean, Charlie Brewer could be gone, who knows, but you will have to see. But yeah, I mean, if they could have beaten Oklahoma on November 16th, remember when they were up uh, by a large amount? If they could have held on to that and possibly beaten Oklahoma in the in the uh, Big Ten or the, the Big 12, sorry, championship game, they would have been onto the playoff, I'm sure. Uh, but number one is LSU, obviously. And I mean, this team was incredible this season. They ended up finishing off 15 and 0, and they won the national championship along with that. Their 2019 prediction for me was 10 and 2, so I expected them to be good. I expected them to have more of a similar season compared to 2018. 
Of course, uh, at that time, we didn't know how good Joe Burrow was going to be. I mean, uh, he was not, he was a great quarterback in 2018, but he was, he was nothing like how he was this year, that's for sure. They finished first in the SEC West, ended up winning the SEC against Georgia 37-10, and then they dominated Clemson 42-25 in the national championship. So, uh, obviously, I mean, LSU was a great team, and this kind of surprised me as to the fact that they won the national championship. I really didn't think LSU uh, was going to end up making it even to the college football playoff. I thought they would make it um, or make a run for the SEC championship. I thought Alabama was going to end up winning their division, uh, but nonetheless, LSU was able to do it. And it was a heck of a year for this team. Uh, that was that was an incredible season played by this team. Uh, I was very, very impressed by how they did it. And, of course, Joe Burrow. I mean, 5,600 yards of passing along with 60 passing touchdowns. He had one of the best seasons that I've ever seen from a college real player. I mean, that was absolutely incredible. Uh, but nonetheless, let me know your thoughts on this top 10 in the rankings or in the comments below let me know if you disagree with anything uh, who, who you put at number one of course I mean there could be many many answers uh, for number one in this situation but I thought it'd have to be LSU because I mean man what they did this season was incredible uh, but nonetheless also let me know um, any other teams you think should be on this list in the comments too I'd really appreciate that uh, but yeah thank you all for watching show some support if you'd like to and stay tuned for more from all sports central I will see you all later